<laughs> We're gonna die! <laughs> hey, Harpster, what are you doing tonight? Nothing, why? Wanna visit a haunted house? Oh no! <laughs> that guy is gonna kill us! It's this house that's in the woods and it's full of Satan worshiping midgets. Run, just run, just run, just get out of here, just get out of here. There's no such thing, that is so stupid. What a dumb idea. <laughs> I'm hiding, I'm hiding, I'm hiding, I'm hiding. No, it's real. We should go drive over there and check it out. No, 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 I wish I never came. I wish I never came. <laughs> I can't wait to tell you the rest of the story about the time I visited the Satanic Midget House. But first, I have to answer this question. Is Ohio strange? Well, if you think putting cinnamon and chili and then putting that chili on top of spaghetti noodles is weird, then yes, Ohio is strange. Or having a field of cement corn statues that's a little odd. How about an abandoned building that looks like a wicker basket that's big enough for a small airplane to fly through the handle? We have that. Or how about two universities with almost the exact same name, Ohio University and The Ohio State University? Yeah, that's kind of odd, but we can do one better than that because we have two NFL teams, one orange and brown and white, and the other team's colors are orange, black, and white. Wow, that's unique. Hey, here in the Buckeye State, anything is possible. Oh, and why are we called the Buckeye State? Because of this round nut. It looks like the eye of a deer or a buck's eye. And it's also one of the university's mascots. His name's Brutus. Last week, two alligators were discovered in northwestern Ohio swimming in a lake. But when I lived in Columbus, Ohio, which is in the dead center of the state, there was actually seven alligator sightings. So take that, Florida. You got nothing on us. Along with alligator sightings, we have our fair share of cryptids. What are cryptids? Cryptids are creatures, monsters, animals that don't really exist except in the minds of really drunk people late at night. We have the grass man which is like a poor, drunk version of Bigfoot. And then, to top that, we have Bessie, which is an even poorer, even drunker person's version of the Loch Ness Monster, and it's swimming somewhere around Lake Erie. Close to where I live, we have the Loveland Frogman, part frog, part man, kind of roams the shores of the Miami River. And I think it's just a froaky Pokemon. Maybe it just got out of its Pokeball. Who knows? Our most famous cryptid, the one we're known for, is one we share with West Virginia, and that is the Mothman. They actually made a movie about it, so if you're really interested, you can check it out. And they even have a Mothman museum in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. But my weird Ohio story starts my junior year of high school. It's the year 1990. My friend Sharky is telling me, not his real name, by the way, all about this crazy house. It's called the Satanic Midget House. Now, supposedly, there's like 50 Satanic Midgets that live in this house. I don't know how this urban legend started, but that's what it was called. And I know the word midget is sort of got some negative feelings today in this day and age. So I'm going to call it the Little Muffin House from now on. Not only do we have to visit the Little Muffin House, we have to somehow sneak up to the house and actually touch it in order to say that we did this brave act, I guess. I guess that was the idea is somehow touching the house and being able to tell everybody about it was going to, I don't know, we're in high school, we're idiots. That's why we went and did this. So it's pitch black, it's dark, it's a country road, it's in the woods, it's paved in gravel, it's everything that every horror movie starts off with. We get out of the car, oh, important note here, I parked my car in an empty lot where they're building a house. That'll come back later on in the story. Anyways, I parked my car in this empty lot and we start walking down this gravel road. Our, our plan is that we are going to go through the woods, through a cornfield, sneak up to the house, 
touch the house, and then run away. We go into the woods, Sharky and I, and we're walking around when we hear a noise. And we see shadows. And we see other high schoolers there. We don't know them. They go to a nearby high school, but there's about eight of them. And they're also planning on going up and touching the house. So now we've got 10 high school kids gonna go through this cornfield to go up and touch the little muffin house. And it's loud as heck. I mean, we've got 10 high school kids tromping through a cornfield and corn is not exactly a very quiet thing to be crawling and tiptoeing through. As we're crawling through this cornfield, we see shadows walking up towards the house, up right in the front of the driveway. We watch and we realize it's another group of teenagers who we don't know who these kids are. All of a sudden we hear bang, bang, bang. They just knocked on the front door of the house and now they bolted back to the street, to their cars. And they're getting ready to take off. The lights of the little muffin house flip on Dogs are barking. It is crazy. We are frozen in place in fear. Not sure what to do at this point. Run! Shouts one of the teenagers in the group. Brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of that? So we start running through the cornfield, which is not easy, by the way. We get to the gravel road, and it's just Sharky and I. I have no idea where the other teenagers went. They kept running through the woods in a different direction. I have no idea. All I know is I need to get back to my car, and we need to get out of here. This is where it gets interesting though. We noticed there's two pickup trucks with their lights shining right on my car. And I notice a guy, he's yelling to his buddy, the numbers of my license plate. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, but even worse is the next thing I notice is this dude is holding an ax. He is holding an ax. He's swinging it from side to side, uh, not at the car. He's just kind of, you know, swinging it just kind of loosely side to side. But anyways, he's got an ax. So the guy with the ax sees us. Are these your cars? Yes, I say in my most uh, adult voice possible. Anyways, the guy's like, what the heck are you doing on our property? And I tell him we came to see the little muffin house. Now, the guy is very annoyed. Teenagers have been bugging this piece of property. They've been messing with his a lot where he's building a house. This is a weekly occurrence, and he's tired of it. He's doing his best to scare us, and it's working. I'm scared. So Sharky and I, we're not the brightest guys in the world, but we are pretty good talking to adults. And so we decide quickly on our feet that we're going to use our journalism class as the reason we're here. That's right. We're here to do a story on a spooky, terrifying house that's supposed to be full of 50 satanic midgets. That makes sense. That works, right? So we tell the guy, hey, what if we did a story about this house and let people know that it's not scary and that they need to stop coming out here? We can do an interview. We can take photos. The guy says he knows the people at the Little Muffin House and he can put us in contact with them. And then if we could do something to stop the kids from coming out there, he would be so grateful for that. He actually was a pretty cool guy. I kind of got where he was coming from. He was just tired of people messing with his stuff. I mean, when you move out to an abandoned country road that's miles away from everything, you kind of don't want people hanging around and bugging you, right? That's the reason you move there. In the end, Sharky was able to do an amazing article that ran in the school newspaper all about the Little Muffin House. So, that's my weird Ohio story. It was all kind of a made-up sort of thing, and that's kind of where all these urban legends come from. You know, they're really just fun, fanciful stories, just like cryptids. They don't exist. It's just something that somebody's imagination started and then other people add to it. And next thing you know, you got yourself an urban legend. Isn't that right, Jeff? Well, thanks so much for watching this video. Hey, I hope you visit Weird Ohio sometime and see all the amazing sights. And uh, let me know if anything strange happens to you. I'd love to hear about it. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Every town has an urban legend. What's your town's urban legend? Or tell me your favorite cryptid. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.